I said, in terms of visual feedback, it's like, you know, like I said, we play golf by feel, but we really don't. It's like I wouldn't have guessed that I, I have these a certain move. Now, you know, very evident to me is kind of the typical swing where you see how the club's laying here. It went back on a certain plane, mm -hmm. and then it's going to come over the top. Mm -hmm. You've heard that term, right? Where you've had kind of what we would call a pull swing. See, the club comes a little bit underneath. Yep which is no biggie. I mean, this is just you. This is your DNA. So as teachers, we say, all right, what makes, you know, it'd be nice for me to say, gee, I wish he didn't do that. But is it is it necessary for us to tear into everything to, for fi to find two shots per nine? Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. But what you'll see here is, see how that little move, you kind of went to the ball? Mm -hmm. Instead of dropping that right down here on plane, right, you're going to see the hands come out away from you and go to the ball. See? Mm -hmm. So now that club's coming, you'll see the club head start getting a little bit outside of the ball. Outside in, yeah. yeah so there's your outside in path. So mm -hmm. that ball's already, that club's already outside, and you look at the perfect world. You know, this is just basically certain categories of players, okay, when you define how the club swings around their body, mm -hmm. you know, you can call it the swing plane, you know, whatever you want, but it's it's kind of like what good players do is they have very little differentiation between that club swinging back and swinging through. So if you talked about the golf swing as a circle, right, mm -hmm. they kind of keep it on that track. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a good little comparative here. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just it's a good. These are just the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not. There's no bad names up there. No. That's correct. So what they do is they kind of swing it back on that. A little jiggles there, but you're going to watch that club come right back down on the line there. It looks pretty close to where it's supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. So they they swing that thing on that circle. Mm -hmm. That's why they they're so good. So there's John Q, public golfer, you know. Amateur golfer, none of us do that, right? And you're pretty good there, right? So that club's kind of parallel to it's that, parallel, but know. then it's going to come out and over, and then mm -hmm. so you got a bit of a pull swing. So uh, part of that is when you stay back on that back foot, like you've correctly diagnosed, you mm -hmm. see how that foot's staying flat. Mm -hmm. So the club's going to pull to the left because your weight, it's hard for you to transfer your weight and get the club moving towards the target. So you're a classic inside outer with or outside in guy who tends to pull across the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, some of your divots probably point a little left at times. Oh, yeah. But your face stays open. So you're that's actually a correction to make the ball spin to the right. Mm. So you're a typical pull fader or pull slicer. Mm -hmm. And when we make good contact, well, it's not a bad way to play. Let's look at the front view shots here. So if we look at some front views now, you know, so I'm, I'm already on, in tune a little bit about fixing what we would call the swing path. Mm -hmm. We've got to get you more inside to out. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you see, I see a very typical situation here where the arms don't have a good, there's not a good release of the arms. No, it's almost pulls them in. It's kind it? of like a spread elbow mm -hmm. chicken wing. You yeah. heard that one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're a classic chicken winger. <clears throat> and that's why the club face never can really release and close uh, like we'd like it to. So, you know, that's just something that we'll see. And I'll look at some pictures here of... Can I ask you another question about that swing? Yeah. I noticed it in the prior ones, too. But look at this left foot. Look how much it moves. Yeah, you got a little spin out there. It, it's and, and that, 
you tell know, me about that. Yeah, yeah. I would tell you that. See now, your your feet are kind of where they belong now. Now, now your left heel raises right. to help you turn your body, which is no big deal. And then you then I turn. Mm. So you spin on that. So you see how your heel moves. Yep. So that's just a little bit of a quirk. Now, can we live with that? Let's see. But what I really need to do is get you off that right leg better. See right. that that right. heel should be off the ground right now. Right. Now watch him, at impact. You'll see him moving off that leg. Yeah, he's already off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So by the time he's at impact, he's way off. Yeah. He's just barely here, and he's got all his weight on his front leg. So you know your initial feeling and diagnosis, or stuff you've probably been told before in lessons, sure, sure. is yeah, we need to get you off your right side a little better. Yeah. So that'll keep us from hitting it fat. It'll keep us from hitting up on it too much, thin. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that's so that's going to be part of our what we're going to work on a little bit. Again, kind of early general looks here. If if nothing else, it's going to give you the first look about what your swing looks like. So distance-wise, we can see that you don't get much of a swing, back swing, mm-hmm. right? So the bigger that swing arc is, the more time there is to generate speed, mm-hmm. okay? So we don't have much of an upper body turn here. You look at look at your good players, and you, you're always going to see. I can see the back of his back, right? Right. Can't see yours, so you know if that is something that we look at to help you get a few more yards off the tee mm-hmm. without turning you into a basket case. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at. It. Mm-hmm. So there's one way to get distance: is create more speed, have a bigger arc. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've got, that's one of the reasons, though, that you don't venture too far off with your errant shots, because you're, you're kind of working in a nice small little area there. It's, it's a little safe, right? Mm-hmm. So with distance comes risk. Right. Okay, so that's, you know, again, we're always going to go back to when we make decisions about what we're going to do with you down the road, mm-hmm. it's always going to come back to. Hey, we only got to find two shots per nine. We don't need to reinvent the wheel here, right? right? So my main goal with you is going to have to do with you learning more about your swing, okay, and learning about why the ball does what it does. And, and that means having an understanding of what happens on your poor shots. Uh, ultimately, we're, it's going to come down to... Uh, I gotta fix my my bad shots. Mm-hmm. And I gotta know why the bad shots occur, right. and that's where we go. And as opposed to making swing changes just for the sake of making swing changes, right? Right. Uh, first thing I see here in, is is your you don't have the ability to hit the ball really high in the air, really high, and that has to do with your technique. The club doesn't ever really it stays kind of de-lofted. See how the club face is pointing down there? Mm-hmm. So that means you generate. Now, you see how your swing path is coming across the ball? Mm-hmm. And then even more so on these shots, you stay back on that foot on the little baby shots. Yeah. And we, do, we do more of that. We, we dive into that leg a little mm-hmm. bit. So we're, we're going to learn that we're going to get over there equally with small swings and big swings. So, so you want to transfer weight the same way with the swing? Yep, it's just a miniature version. So, and, and towards the end here, see how you, you got that one up in the air, but believe it or not, you don't know how much higher that ball could go because you just turn that, is that a sand wedge? Um, 58 degrees. 58. You turn that sand wedge into about, just by your methods and your instincts and your setup and your swing, you turn that into a, a nine iron. Mm-hmm. And if that shaft gets delivered to the ball, with more of a 90 degree angle, you're going to get 58 degrees of loft. In other words, my hands are way in front of the ball. Yeah, you've de-lofted the mm-hmm. club, both in your a direct impact when the shaft's leaning forward, you're taking loft off the club, mm-hmm. and how you take the club away with your hand, you de-loft it. So that's going to be a fun thing for us to learn about. Mm-hmm. Boy, I can get it up there if I need to. Mm-hmm. At times you knew. No, I know. Uh, there's times I can see with your short game with the firm greens around here in the winter, the ball runs away from me a lot. 
does. Yeah. So that's going to be a fun little thing to to learn about and uh, good thing for me to get in tune to. Now here with your little chip and run, you're, this is a pretty basic shot for you. It's not really that complicated. You're not too bad at it. Got pretty good instincts there. You don't get real flippy with the wrist. That looks good. Pretty pretty common shot for you. Good, pretty good confidence. But even here we'll see the swing, yeah, swing path goes to the left. Mm -hmm. So we got some good stuff to learn about. So this is just kind of a little picture of, of the way you look right now. Right. And, uh, the, the, the before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a big picture summary of things I'm thinking about mm -hmm. down the road. And we'll have some, some of these uh, original recording here to refer to later. When we start working on individual shots, we'll say, well, here's what it looked like before. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we've been working on that. Here's another picture. Boy, that looks better, doesn't it? Start seeing the ball get up in the air. So it's all about uh, increasing your knowledge base, Larry. Mm -hmm. That's all. And some of your um, things that you've taken into your swing thoughts, you know, maybe we'll say, yeah, that makes sense. Or maybe I'll say, you know what? Maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe let's try this as a thought. Mm -hmm. That's what we kind of. That's the beauty of having some time to work together. So, so pretty good, pretty good first look.